uh, Troy, there was a, a big meeting uh, this weekend. Uh, Donald Trump uh, and his uh, former nemesis, Governor Ron DeSantis, met uh, for two hours privately uh, in uh, Miami. Now, it is my understanding uh, that representatives of Governor DeSantis told the Washington Post, who broke this story, uh, that Trump had requested the meeting. Yet my sources in the Trump camp tell me that's incorrect, uh, that it was DeSantis who wanted uh, this meeting. The idea uh, that Ron DeSantis uh, has some enormous financial network which candidate Trump now needs to tap into is largely false among small and medium-sized donors. Uh, DeSantis was an abject failure. Most of his campaign money in his uh, in his campaign for president uh, came from very very large donors uh, and uh, from bundlers. Uh, most of his donors or most of his donations came from individuals or entities who had to give because they do business in the state of Florida, uh, where the governor has enormous power to affect their business. Uh, and uh, therefore, people gave not because they loved Ron DeSantis, but because they had to. So this idea uh, that uh, that DeSantis could somehow deliver a financial network to the president is not accurate. Many, many of the larger bundlers who were supporting DeSantis have already come over to Trump. Uh, I'm really uncertain what the purpose of this meeting is, but I guess we couldn't decipher that unless we knew who actually asked for the meeting. Uh, and uh, I don't think uh, it was President Trump. Now, I'm told uh, that the meeting uh, may have been somewhat contentious in the beginning, but once they got through that, that Governor DeSantis pledged to do whatever he can and whatever is necessary to make sure that President Trump carries Florida. Uh, I hope that that is accurate. I hope, also hope it proves to be true. Once again, Troy, I want to go on record as saying that anybody who looks at Florida and thinks it is completely safe in a red state based on the last uh, statewide elections, I think makes a mistake. While I would give President Trump an edge here, uh, the fact that the Democrats have put recreational marijuana on the ballot as a constitutional amendment uh, and the fact that they have petitioned on a constitutional amendment on abortion rights, essentially repealing the six weeks ban uh, that DeSantis and the Republican legislature put into place uh, uh, last year, uh, that is going to jack up uh, turnout uh, among younger voters, particularly, but also among more Democratic-leaning voters. And of course, the abortion question will be used to try to shape uh, perceptions of the presidential campaign. Biden and the Democrats, particularly the Florida Democrats, they would like this election to be about abortion, uh, not about our open in border, uh, not about the illegal invasion of America uh, by migrants, uh, not about the potential for World War III, uh, not about shipping billions to Ukraine, uh, not uh, about uh, unfreezing hundreds of billions uh, for Iran, not about the cost of a gallon of gasoline, which you can slowly see creeping up. Uh, not about uh, the cost of groceries uh, when you go to the supermarket, if you can find what you're looking for. Uh, they don't want it to be about any of these things. Uh, they would like it to be about abortion. Your thoughts? Well, Roger, I think I always come back to uh, what you say, because, you know, we look at the uh, situation that we uncovered in the 2022 election where DeSantis um, fundraiser Erica Alba kind of has her fingers all over this uh, Florida voters in charge uh, uh, pack that was given out money to um, election supervisors across the state of Florida. Uh, and then I also look at the speculation. Uh, so you look at the election system just in Florida and you say, well, DeSantis really has some influence here. 
Um, and it's and it's money that's coming from really nefarious groups of people. And I think uh, it's been pointed out on this show many times, the idea that he would win Miami-Dade County in the way that he did is pretty much impossible. And I think uh, it's, look, it's easy to look at the DeSantis election, Roger, I think for a lot of Republicans and to say, well, you know, he won and, and, and Florida has a red governor. But at the same time, we have to look at how that was obtained. And I think DeSantis's way that he's he's politically acting is a lot like the Democrats. I don't think we win by becoming the Democrats. I think we win uh, by by standing for what we believe in. And as far as DeSantis is concerned, I'm seeing more and more about VP speculation, Roger. And I always come back to what we talk about on this show. The uh, it, it's it's not prohibited, but you're saying that the Florida is a is a question mark on its own. You know, without any kind of additional legal problems, Florida is still a toss up. It's a purple state. Um, I think. And, and, and there's been no talk about this from you. You haven't mentioned this, but I've seen this online and people are speculating about it now because of this meeting that Trump could go back to the original thing that you know, Republicans wanted and, and, and to put DeSantis on the ticket. I don't see that as a possibility because I think any chance you have of winning Florida goes out the window if you pick a vice presidential candidate. Um, in DeSantis, who is a resident of the same state as President Donald Trump, who also lives in Florida. So I'd like you to talk about that real quickly. Um, Trump picking DeSantis would kind of completely rule out any idea of Republicans winning the election and the state of Florida, wouldn't it? Uh, I don't think that that was the purpose of this meeting. I don't think Governor DeSantis is under consideration for the vice presidential nomination. As you know, the 12th Amendment of the Constitution while it does not specifically prohibit uh, uh, two individuals who are legal residents of the same state from being on the ticket uh, for president and vice president, uh, it would, however, uh, force you to forfeit the electoral college votes of that state. Now, there's an argument uh, that the party could nominate two individuals uh, from Florida. Let's say, hypothetically, President Donald Trump uh, and uh, Congressman Byron Donalds, both legal residents uh, of Florida. Uh, And uh, they could certainly legally be on the ballot. If the ticket won, uh, then theoretically, uh, before the Electoral College met, uh, either President Trump, highly unlikely, or uh, newly elected President, Vice President-elect Donalds, hypothetically, uh, could legally change uh, their state of residence to a different state and therefore avoid uh, the 12th Amendment uh, uh, prescription. I'm not an attorney and I don't know if that would work, uh, but I do know that explaining it to the voters uh, would be uh, extraordinarily uh, difficult. Uh, I, I, there are a number of potential candidates in Florida. I don't really count DeSantis, but uh, uh, Ron, uh, Senator Marco Rubio has been named. General Michael Flynn has been mentioned. Uh, the aforementioned Congressman Byron Donalds. Um, I don't believe any of them at this juncture are under serious consideration. Donalds could be, I don't know. But you still have that uh, Florida uh, 12th Amendment issue. Uh, all the way back when there was first discussion of DeSantis, challenging uh, Trump, uh, I raised this 12th Amendment uh, question uh, to those who said, oh, well, look, we can we can avoid this clash of the titans uh, by forming a Trump DeSantis ticket. I think the 12th Amendment of the Constitution pretty much uh, prohibits uh, that. Um, I'm going to do a, uh, a quick, uh, shameless uh, commercial pitch here, folks, uh, Troy, because Believe it or not, there's a lot of people who have not read my book, The Man Who Killed Kennedy, The Case Against LBJ. Uh, This is a New York Times bestseller uh, in which I use uh, eyewitness evidence, fingerprint evidence, deep Texas politics, and a lot of documentation to make the case that it was LBJ at the helm of a plot that included the CIA, uh, organized crime, the mob, big Texas oil, Uh, the Secret Service, uh, and the banking interests uh, to uh, kill President John F. Kennedy on November 22nd, uh, 1963. You can get your very own copy uh, of The Man Who Killed Kennedy, 
uh, by going to themanwhokilledkennedy.com. Uh, there's a brief uh, discussion there of the book. And when you order by going to themanwhokilledkennedy.com, uh, you will not only get the paperback version that has three extra chapters, uh, but it will be personally signed. It can even be inscribed to you personally if you so request. So again, the man who killed Kennedy dot com. Uh, it is my first book. It is a New York Times bestseller. I'm extraordinarily proud uh, of it. A man who's gone through hell, but he's kept going and he's smart and he's strong and people Love him. Not everybody, but people love him and respect him. Roger Stone. Where's Roger Stone? <laughs> Roger Stone and nothing wrong. They want to get me like I'm Roger Stone. Roger, Roger. They want to get me like I'm Roger Stone. They want to frame me like I'm Roger Stone. Yeah, they want me. They wanna frame me like I'm Roger Stone.